867 drivers have competed in Formula 1 over the past 72 and a bit years. Of those 867, 34 have been crowned champion. To be champion, it takes a combination of incredible skill, being in the right place at the right time, and a generous sprinkling of luck along the way. These 34 champions all had to start somewhere, and their future successes may not have always been obvious at first. Here, we are going to rank every Formula 1 world champion's debut race. Not just how they performed, but how the weekend went as a whole, whether they had bad luck with mechanical problems, got penalised, or got caught up in accidents that weren't their fault. There's quite a variety here, covering almost everything that can happen in a Grand Prix weekend, so let's get started. So, in last is Damon Hill. As champions go, Damon Hill's Formula 1 career was quite topsy-turvy. He was the son of a two-time champion, made his debut at the relatively late age of 31 with a formerly mighty team on their last legs, got promoted to the top team, then fired despite winning the championship, then fizzled out in the midfield after just seven seasons. The aforementioned debut came at the 1992 Spanish Grand Prix for Brabham, who had been a force to be reckoned with in the 1980s but were now fading fast. He was replacing Giovanna Amati, who had been fired after just three races, having clearly been brought up to Formula 1 early. He had some familiarities with Formula 1 cars though, as a test driver for Williams at the opposite end of the grid. Here, on his debut however, there wasn't much he could do. He qualified 30th and last for a 26-car grid, a second behind teammate Eric van der Poel, and also behind all four drivers that had to go through pre-qualifying, and it would be five more races before he did manage to start a race. But at least he was faster than Andrea Moda. In 33rd is Mario Andretti. This is an interesting one. Before diving headfirst into Formula 1, Mario Andretti was already a two-time USAC champion and had finished runner-up two more times. Andretti met Colin Chapman of Lotus at the Indy 500 in 1965, and in 1968 arranged to run one of his cars at that year's Italian Grand Prix. He qualified an impressive 10th in the pioneering 49B, however, along with Bobby Unzer, he then flew back to the United States to compete in the Hoosier 100 at the Indiana State Fairgrounds dirt track to then fly back to Italy overnight for the race. Both drivers were told that if they left, they would be banned from competing in the race due to a rule barring competing other events within 24 hours of the start of a Grand Prix. So Andretti flew back to the US, finished second in the Hoosier 100, and did not return to Italy. He came back for the United States Grand Prix, where he got pole but retired with a broken clutch, and didn't go full-time with Formula 1 until 1975. In 32nd is Jack Brabham. Jack Brabham was one of the old-school racers who was a well-rounded mechanic and engineer who often maintained and serviced his own cars. He moved to the UK in 1955 and quickly got friendly with Cooper Cars, where he built his own car, the T40, and entered it in that year's British Grand Prix. It had an undersized 2.0-litre Bristol engine, and he qualified 25th and last, 14 seconds off Peter Collins in 24th and 27 seconds off Paul to Sterling Moss. He ran around in last during the race until the engine died on lap 31. He made a second attempt at it in a Maserati 250F in 1956, and then became a full-time Cooper driver in 1957. In 31st is Nigel Mansell. Mansell's early performances in the UK motorsport scene caught the attention of Colin Chapman, who made him a test driver for Lotus in 1979, having lost the shootout for the second race seat alongside Mario Andretti for 1980 to Elio De Angelis. He impressed enough though as a test driver for Chapman to give him a shot at the Austrian Grand Prix. He qualified a slightly disappointing 24th, with Andretti in 17th, and before the race start fuel leaked into the cockpit and soaked his overalls, leaving him with first and second degree burns to his rear end, before the engine died on lap 41 while he was in 13th. He did two more races that year before getting a full-time seat in 1981. In 30th is Alan Jones. Jones raced a numerous series in Europe before finishing runner-up in the Formula Atlantic Championship in 1974 with Harry Stiller Racing, with whom he bought an old Hesketh and entered Formula 1 the following year, debuting at the Spanish Grand Prix. The entire weekend was turbulent due to numerous drivers threatening to boycott the race due to the state of the circuit. Jones qualified a modest 20th out of 26 drivers, but only four laps into the race he hit oil left by Jody Schechter's dying engine and spun off into the barriers, with the race being red flagged early after a crash that killed four spectators. 
He did three more races of Harry Stiller Racing before the team folded and then switched to Embassy Hill and then Team 30s. In 29th is Keke Rosberg. KK Rosberg didn't start racing until his 20s and made his Formula 1 debut in 1978 after only two years in European Formula 2, being generously funded by Fred Opert. He got a seat with Theodore Racing and debuted at the South African Grand Prix, having already greatly impressed many by winning the BRDC International Trophy. He was Theodore's sole entrant at Kyle Army and qualified 24th for a 26-car grid and made enormous gains on the opening lap and got up to 16th, but lasted only 15 laps before the clutch gave out. He alternated between Theodore, ATS and Wolf over the next two years before signing for Fittipaldi Automotive in 1980. In 28th is John Surtees. Surtees started his career in motorbikes, winning seven world championships before deciding to branch out to cars in 1960. A man of his reputation got a seat with the Lotus, getting his first go at the BRDC International Trophy before debuting officially at the Monaco Grand Prix. He just about qualified for the race, going 15th fastest out of 24 entrants for a 16-car grid, but was the slowest of his three teammates who were in 14th, 7th and on pole. He jumped up to 9th on the second lap, was passed by Graham Hill on lap 9, and then the gearbox gave out on lap 17. He did a handful more races for Lotus in 1960 in between his motorcycle duties before switching from two wheels to four full-time in 1961. In 27th is Niki Lauda. In 1971, Lauda took out a £30,000 bank loan in order to secure a seat with March in European Formula 2. While doing this campaign, he also made a one-off appearance for March at the Austrian Grand Prix. He qualified 21st, 2.2 seconds behind teammate Mike Butler in 19th, but retired with handling problems after 20 laps. Following this were two financially strapped years with March and BRM before getting his big break with Ferrari. In 26th is Nelson Piquet. Piquet won the Super Visco British Formula 3 Championship in a very convincing fashion in 1978 and also finished runner-up in the Vandervelde British Formula 3 Championship. Towards the tail end of these campaigns, he secured a one-off drive of Enzyme at the German Grand Prix. He qualified an impressive 21st, ahead of teammate Harold Ertel, but lost the engine on lap 32 while in 12th. He then did three races of BS Fabrications and then sided with Brabham for the final round and stayed with them for the next seven years. In 25th is Jensen Button. Button's entry into Formula 1 was a bit unusual, as he did a trial with Williams despite not thinking he was ready, and it was only on the morning of the car's launch that he found out that he got the seat for 2000, becoming the youngest British driver in Formula 1 history at that time. He qualified very poorly at the Australian Grand Prix in 21st, a whole 1.6 seconds behind teammate Ralph Schumacher in 11th. In the race, however, he made a spirited start and got up to 15th on the first lap. He worked his way through the field slowly and he eventually found himself in the points, but alas, the engine died on lap 47 with just 11 laps to go. In 24th is Mika Hakkinen. Hakkinen was in high demand going into the 90s, having won Nordic Formula Ford, the Opel Lotus Euro Series, the Selnet Formula 3 Super Prix, and British Formula 3. He tested with Benetton, but signed for the iconic but dwindling Lotus for 1991. At the opening round in Phoenix, he qualified an astonishing 13th, three seconds ahead of teammate Julian Bailey, who was last and failed to qualify. He had a poor start, however, and dropped to the back after his first pit stop and eventually retired on lap 59 with an engine failure while running in 12th. In 23rd is Jochen Rint. After a few years racing in sports cars and Formula 2, Rint was loaned a Brabham BT11 by Rob Walker to race in the 1964 Austrian Grand Prix. He qualified 13th, just behind Joe Siffert running the same car, and made it just over halfway through the race before the steering broke on lap 59, having dropped down the order. He went full-time the following year, and continued to do Formula 2 in tandem with Formula 1 until his death in 1970. In 22nd is Ayet and Senna. Senna proved his mettle upon moving to Europe by winning British Formula Ford 1600, European Formula Ford 2000, British Formula 3, and the Macau Grand Prix in the space of three years, but despite being in high demand, a lack of vacancies meant he signed for relatively new backmarker team Tolman for 1984. His debut came at his home race, the Brazilian Grand Prix. He qualified an impressive 17th, 
1.8 seconds ahead of teammate Johnny Chicotto in 18th, but lasted only 9 laps before the car's turbo gave out, becoming the first retirement of the year. In 21st is Fernando Alonso. After winning the Euro Open by Nissan Championship with Campos Motorsport in 1999, Alonso moved to International Formula 3000 in 2000 with the Minardi-backed team Astro Mega, who also made him their test and reserve driver. He was given a race seat in 2001, and at the Australian Grand Prix qualified what was for Minardi an impressive 19th, beating the Prost of Gaston Mazzacane, the Jaguar of Luciano Berti, and teammate Tarso Marquez by a whole 2.6 seconds. He ran largely alone in a race interrupted by safety cars and the death of a track marshal, and finished 12th. In 20th is Emerson Fittipaldi. After abandoning hydroplanes and moving to Europe to race cars, Fittipaldi impressed enough in Formula Ford and Formula 2 to be made Lotus's third driver for 1970, used for trialling rookie drivers, sharing the seat with Alex Solaroig. It was Fittipaldi's turn at the wheel for the British Grand Prix. He qualified a disappointing 23rd, far behind teammates John Miles and Jochen Rint in 7th and on pole, and in the race was running around at the back, but after a large number of retirements came home in 8th. Rint's sudden death at Monza and Miles' subsequent departure meant he was bumped up to the first driver early, but performed equal to the task and won the next race and stayed with the team for the next four years. In 19th is Max Verstappen. The Wonder Boy had only a single year's experience in single-seaters before signing with Toro Rosso for 2015 aged just 17. He qualified 12th for the season-opening Australian Grand Prix, four places behind fellow rookie teammate Carlos Sainz. Only 15 drivers started the race, and he was running in the points until the engine died on lap 33. In 18th is Graham Hill. Like many drivers of his generation, Hill started out as a mechanic who raced on the side before committing to it full-time. He spent a few years as a mechanic at Lotus before convincing Colin Chapman to put him in the car for their Formula 1 debut, the 1958 Monaco Grand Prix. He qualified 15th out of 16 drivers, 4 tenths behind teammate Cliff Allison in 13th, but made progress in the race and got himself up to 6th before the half shaft broke on lap 70. He stayed with Lotus for the next two years before moving to BRM. In 17th is Phil Hill. Hill dropped out of university to move to Europe and pursue racing, where he spent many years racing in sports cars before being offered a Maserati 250F by Joe Bonnier to race in the French Grand Prix in 1958. He qualified 13th, and numerous retirements for other drivers meant he finished 7th, and was then shortly offered a seat with Ferrari. In 16th is Denny Holm. After moving to the UK, Holm started working in Jack Brabham's garage, who raced him in Formula 2 and Formula Junior before giving him a Formula 1 seat for 1965. He made his debut at the Monaco Grand Prix, qualifying 8th, ahead of teammates Bob Anderson and Joe Bonnier in 9th and 13th, but far behind teammate and boss Brabham himself in 2nd. He battled closely with Bonnier and Joe Siffert all race and was running in 7th until developing mechanical problems and finished 8th, 8 laps down on winner Graham Hill. He remained a part of the Brabham family until winning the title in 1967 and moving to McLaren. In 15th is Jackie Stewart. After a career as a professional skeet shooter in the 1950s, Stewart followed in his brother's footsteps and pursued cars in the 1960s, eventually winning British Formula 3 in 1964 and then signing for BRM in 1965. He debuted at the South African Grand Prix and qualified 11th, 1.9 seconds behind teammate Graham Hill in 5th. He benefited from mechanical problems for other drivers to finish 6th and score a point, but was still two laps behind Hill who finished 3rd. In 14th is Alain Prost. After winning both French and European Formula 3, Prost signed with McLaren for 1980. At the season opening Argentine Grand Prix, he made a big statement by qualifying 12th, a second ahead of teammate John Watson in 17th. The intense heat and force of the ground effects of the cars meant that the track surface was coming apart during the race, and Prost got up to 8th on the first lap and after a deluge of retirements finished 6th out of 7 finishers, scoring a point on his debut. In 13th is Jody Schechter. The South African sensation moved to the UK in 1972 to race in European and British Formula 2 with McLaren, and at the end of the year was put in one of their cars for the United States Grand Prix. He qualified an impressive 8th, though far behind teammates Peter Reverson and Denny Holman 2nd and 3rd. He had an astonishing start and was up to 3rd on lap 2. 
He was passed by Francois Savelle on lap 17, and a brief rain shower on lap 40 meant he spun at turn 1 and dropped to 15th, but still climbed back up to 9th at the end. He raced sporadically with McLaren in 1973 and then got a full-time seat with Tyrrell in 1974. In 12th is James Hunt. Hunt joined the new laid-back Hesketh team in Formula 2 in 1972, and the following year they bought a March 731 to race in Formula 1, debuting at the Monaco Grand Prix. He qualified a modest 18th and was able to make moves in the early laps and benefit from driver retirements to get himself up to 6th, battling all the way with Peter Revson. However, the engine died on lap 74, with just 4 laps to go, but he was still classified in 9th. In 11th is Kimi Raikkonen. When Raikkonen signed for Sauber in 2001, there was widespread scepticism as he had done just 23 races in single-seaters, though he had won 13 of them. He qualified 13th for the Australian Grand Prix, 4 tenths behind teammate Nick Heidfeld in 10th. He dropped to 16th on the first lap, and after several retirements from other drivers crossed the line in 7th, but a time penalty for Olivier Parnis moved him up to 6th to score a point on his debut. In 10th is Sebastian Vettel. Vettel was a Red Bull junior who was loaned out to BMW Sauber as a test driver for 2006 while racing in the Formula 3 Euro Series, continuing in this role in 2007, now racing in the Formula Renault 3.5 Series. After Robert Kubica's mega crash at Montreal, he was advised to miss the next round at Indianapolis, so Vettel filled in for him. He managed to break into Q3 and qualify 7th, only 7 tenths behind teammate Nick Heidfeld in 5th. He ran across the grass at Turn 1 at the start and dropped to 11th. He found himself stuck in traffic for large parts of the race but eventually finished in 8th after a last minute retirement for Nico Rosberg, scoring a point on his debut. Four races later, Scott Speed was fired from Toro Rosso, so Vettel abandoned the Formula Renault 3.5 series and got his promotion early. In ninth is Jim Clark. Clark had caught the attention of Colin Chapman early in his career and was called up to substitute for John Surtees at the 1960 Dutch Grand Prix while Surtees was racing in the Isle of Man TT. He qualified 11th, behind teammates Sterling Moss, Innes Ireland and Alan Stacey, but in the early laps stormed his way through the field and got himself up to 5th before he lost 5th gear on lap 43. That however was enough for him to stay with Lotus until his untimely death in 1968. In 8th is Michael Schumacher. Schumacher made the unusual decision at the height of his junior career to join Mercedes in the World Sports Car Championship in 1990. Towards the end of 1991, he got an offer to substitute for the recently imprisoned Bertrand Gachot for Jordan at the Belgian Grand Prix. He had never driven at Spa before, but learnt it by cycling around, and then qualified a sensational 7th, matching the team's season best, 7 tenths ahead of experienced teammate Andrea de Cesaris. He passed Sean Lacey at the start of the race, but alas, the clutch died going through Urouge. Still, this was enough for him to be snatched up by Benetton, and the rest is history. In 7th is Juan Manuel Fangio. Before the inauguration of the Formula 1 World Championship of Drivers in 1950, Fangio had already won at least 20 races in sports cars and Grand Prix cars in the preceding decade, even with the interruption of World War II. He managed to join the Alfa Romeo squad in 1950, who were the team to beat at the time despite running 13-year-old cars. For the British Grand Prix, Formula 1's first ever World Championship race, he qualified third, sandwiched in between his three Alfa Romeo teammates. He ran in third for most of the race before passing Luigi Fagioli for second halfway through, but then an oil pipe broke on lap 63 with just seven laps to go. This, plus two more mechanical retirements, meant he eventually lost the inaugural title to teammate Giuseppe Farina. In sixth is Mike Hawthorne. Hawthorne's father was a mechanic and engineer who supported his son's early forays into sports cars and single-seaters, and as Formula 1 was being run to Formula 2 regulations in 1952, he was able to use his Cooper T20 to enter that year's Belgian Grand Prix. He qualified an unprecedented sixth, despite being a whole 21 seconds off Alberto Ascari on pole. The race was wet, and he managed to gain two places at the start, and despite suffering fuel leakage problems, managed to stay there and finish fourth on his debut. Off the back of this, a third place at Silverstone and a fourth place at Zandvoort came a full-time driver of Ferrari in 1953. In fifth is Nico Rosberg. Nico Rosberg is a Monaco-based YouTuber who once beat Lewis Hamilton in equal machinery, and then his career was over. 
After winning the inaugural GP2 series in 2005, Rosberg was given a seat with Williams for 2006, with whom his father Keke had won the title 24 years prior. At the season opening Bahrain Grand Prix, he advanced to Q2 and qualified 12th in the first running of the new elimination style qualifying, with teammate Mark Webber in 7th. He hit Nick Heidfeld at the start of the race and broke his front wing and promptly dropped to last. However, his race pace was strong, and by running long stints stormed his way through the field and finished an astonishing 7th to score 2 points, only 21 seconds behind Webber, and also got the fastest lap. This however would be Williams' only double points finish that year. In fourth is Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton joined the McLaren Young Driver program at 13, and after winning the GP2 series in 2006 was given a seat with them for 2007, which put him in the rather unique position in the modern era of making his debut with a front-running team and alongside defending champion Fernando Alonso. He qualified a respectable fourth for the Australian Grand Prix, and at the start made a big statement by passing Alonso at Turn 1. He briefly led the race during the first round of pit stops and managed to overcut Nick Heidfeld to get into second, but then Alonso overcut him in the second pit stop phase and he went on to finish in third, being one of just 19 drivers to get a podium on their debut. In third is Alberto Ascari. Ascari dominated post-war Grand Prix racing and in 1949 was picked up by his late father's close friend Enzo Ferrari. Ferrari missed the first round of the inaugural Formula 1 World Championship and made their debut at the Monaco Grand Prix. He qualified a slightly disappointing 7th behind teammate and mentor Luigi Villaresi, a Maserati, a Talbot Largo and all three Alfa Romeos, though his time was fast enough for 4th, but the top 5 places were set during Thursday qualifying. A 9 car pile up after a wave hit to back on the first lap put Ascari up to 5th. He managed to get up to 2nd on lap 3 and diced back and forth with Villaresi until his retirement, and eventually finished there, but was a whole lap down on the completely unchallenged Juan Manuel Fangio, but was himself a whole lap ahead of Louis Chiron in 3rd. Ferrari would struggle to match Alfa Romeo over the next two seasons, but Ascari came to dominate the Formula 2 run years of 1952 and 53. In 2nd is Jacques Villeneuve. After winning IndyCar in 1995, Villeneuve was offered a seat with front-running team Williams for 1996, despite having spent most of his career racing outside Europe and having limited success there when he did. He went through intense training and coaching over the winter and proved his worth by getting pole position at the season-opening Australian Grand Prix. He led almost the entire race and looked set to become only the fourth driver in Formula 1 history to win on their debut. However, an oil leak meant that teammate Damon Hill passed him on lap 54, with only 5 laps to go, and he finished 38 seconds behind in second. And finally, in first is Giuseppe Farina. Farina was a household name in the world of pre-war Grand Prix racing, finding success with both Ferrari and Alfa Romeo. He joined up with Alfa Romeo for the inaugural Formula 1 World Championship, and at the season opening British Grand Prix, put his car on pole, with his three Alfa Romeo teammates right behind him. They ran unchallenged during the race and swapped places a few times, and Farina eventually came home in first place with the fastest lap. Winning from pole is about as good a debut as you can have, and meant that he was Formula 1's first pole sitter, first race winner, and eventually first driver's champion. That's all for this video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at brook underscore F1. A huge shout out and thank you as ever to my Patreon subscribers, especially my two newest subscribers, Mayo is Glue and Joseph Hudson, and I'll see you all next time.